In this lesson, we're going to talk about central tendency and standard deviation. So there's some terms we need to know and some formulas we need to know, as always. First is that the measure of central tendency is the number that represents the center or the middle of a set of values. So central tendency, we think of center number. There are three different ways to calculate central tendency. The first is the mean, which is typically what people mean uh, when they talk about the central number. It's just the average. And then the median, and the median is just the middle number of the set. And the mode is just the number of number or numbers with the greatest frequency. So let's see if we can calculate uh, each of these. Given the set 2, 5, 7, 7, 9, 9, 9, 10, and 14, let's find what the mean is. So in the mean, what we do is we sum the total of values in the set. So if we had 2, 5, 7, 7, 9, 9, 9, 10, and 14, you'll come up with a total of 72. And then you divide that by the number of values in the set, which in this case is going to be 9. And you come up with a number of 8 as the mean. The median is the middle number. So in this case, I have nine numbers. My median is going to be the fifth number, one, two, three, four, five, in order. So you have to write these from smallest to largest. And in order, the center number is going to be nine. Center or the middle number will be nine. Now, with a median, if we had 10 numbers, then the average would be, uh, I'm sorry, the median would be the average of the two numbers that are in the middle. So if we had 10 numbers, we'd have the median values of uh, the two numbers, and we'd average those two values to find out what the median is. The mode is just the number or numbers with the greatest frequency. So we take a look at uh, the list in the set, and we see that 9 is the number with the greatest frequency, and so we write 9. Now, in some cases, there might be more than one number that has the same count or frequency. Um, so let's just say, for example, we had three sevens and three nines. And then the mode would be both seven and nine in this case. Now, if uh, all the numbers occurred with the same frequency, then in this case, you would have no mode. So that's central tendency. Now let's talk about uh, measures of dispersion. And a measure of dispersion is used to tell the spread of the results, or how the spread occurs. So in this case, there are two ways to measure dispersion. One is range, and one is standard deviation. And I'm sure that most of you have heard of standard deviation, but don't necessarily know what it is. Well, range is just the difference between the greatest and least value. So if I have a set of 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, it's just the difference between 6 and 2. So my range is going to be 4. Standard deviation is a little bit different. It's the typical difference, or the deviation, between a data value, so one of the values in the set, and then the mean of that set of values. So let's talk about how we would go about calculating that standard deviation, given our numbers of 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the first thing, and I'm going to go over the process first, and then I'll go over the calculations. The first thing we're going to do is find the mean of the data set. So we add the five numbers together. We divide them by the number of uh, the count, which is five. We come up with a mean. Then we take each value, and we square the difference between that value and the mean. We sum the total of the differences from number two. Then we divide the sum of the differences by uh, number three, by the number of values in the set. And then finally, we take the square root of that value from number four. So let's, let's work through the values to find the standard deviation given our set of two, three, four, five, and six. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the median of the data set. And the median of the data set is just the average of the five numbers. So 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 4 is 9, plus 5 is 14, plus 6 is 20. And I divide that number 
by the count of numbers in the set, which is five. So my median, or I'm sorry, my mean is going to be four. Now I find the differences between each value and I square them. So in this case, I'll have two minus four squared, and then I have three minus four squared, and then I have four minus four squared, and then I have five minus four squared, and then I have six minus four squared. So I'm taking each one of these values, subtracting the mean, and then squaring the difference. So in this case, I have four, two squared is four, one squared is one, zero squared is zero, five minus four is one, one squared is one, two squared is four. Now I total the squared differences from two. So I have four plus one plus zero plus one plus four, and that's going to equal 10. So I total the sum of differences from number two, and then I divide the sum of differences from number three by the number of values in the set. So I have realized that I have one, two, three, four, five values. So I take 10 and I divide that by two, I'm sorry, I divide that by five, and I get two as my answer. Now the last step is to take the square root of the value from four, and this will be my standard deviation. So that means that the square root of two is the typical deviation or difference between the mean of four and the other values that are in the set. Now the last thing to consider, and this is a formula for the standard deviation. It's just standard deviation is this symbol here. I take the square root of each of the values, x1, x2, minus the median, which is x with a little bar on the top. So I square the difference of the values, I add them together, I divide them by the number of values in the set, and then I take the square root. It seems pretty intimidating, but if you follow these steps, then you should be well off. Last thing we want to talk about are outliers. Outliers are, datas, or data points in a set that are much greater or much less than the other data points in the set. Unfortunately, they skew the mean and st standard deviation. So typically what we'll do is to take the uh, outliers out and do a calculation uh, both without and with the outliers to show the difference that's caused in both the mean and the standard deviation based on that particular outlier. So just something to be aware of.